this one guy from high school, uh, actually we went to middle school together, might have been my boyfriend in seventh <laughs> grade for like a minute, um, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, um, I had sent him a couple videos and he got excited about what he saw. Well, oh, that sounds <laughs> that <was> very, <laughs> but, <laughs> well, What were you sending him, Adrian? <laughs> He was curious to know more about the business, about the opportunity. Um, this but, is not an only so, fan story. Yeah. <laughs> Today, we're going to show you exactly how to have effective enrollment conversations so you can learn how to close your prospects in 30 minutes or less without using hardcore sales tactics. Plus, we'll be sharing some of our own closing pitfalls we've personally experienced so you can learn to avoid them and build the network marketing business of your dreams. If you implement everything you learn, we promise that up to 9 out of 10 of your prospects will enroll themselves. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you never miss out on new empowering content. So let's start things off with a bang and share some of our worst closing stories to date. Yeah, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> we probably all have so many. So one of the most memorable ones for me, I got someone interested in joining uh, the business and they were coming onto a Zoom call and it goes okay. You know, I'm sharing about how amazing the products are and suddenly I feel like the energy is a little bit off, like something is weird. And the person's like, yeah, well, your products are okay, but mine are better. I'm like, what in the heck? <laughs> well, then they start asking about compensation plan and I laid it all out. How cool is this? Like, no, but like, but where I'm at, it, you can earn that much. And they, I'm like, what the heck is going on? So it took me a while, but actually that person Person was trying to enroll me on my enrollment <laughs> <laughs> so I was like this is like and it's actually happened more than once and I was like what the heck is going on mm -hmm. like so yeah that was one of my stories that I'll never forget yeah so. I think that that's one of the worst things is like it's like almost like a I'll show you mine if you show me yours yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how many times oh you know, but you don't know that that's how it's gonna go. You don't know. When you, you don't know. <laughs> you get you on. Come on. You get on so exciting. They're really interested in her. Really, they're actually really interested in enrolling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of my terrible enrollment conversations is I remember being at this. It was he was on my chicken list. You all know what your chicken list. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Like the people you're terrified to actually call, the yeah. ones that you want in your business, but you don't have the confidence to call them. Anyway, I set up this meeting with him and um, it went really well. I thought he was engaged. I thought, you know, this is it. Like I'm finally going to enroll somebody that is driven like mm -hmm. I am that wants it like you I got do. Your super yeah, star. like, you know, he was <laughs> he was engaged and like, you know, like yes. asking all the questions and like, I'm like, this is it. Hard. This <laughs> this is it, right? The diamond in the rough. Like here we go, right? <laughs> And when we got finished, I said, so, you know, do you want to enroll with the uh, professional pack or, you know, what fits you best? And I remember him saying, you know what, you did a really great presentation. This is really awesome, but it's just not for me. This business needs somebody that can convince people like you to get into it. Right. And I was crushed. Like I was like, mm. oh, are you serious? Like this, you know, it was just the worst feeling ever. But anyway. so it's kind of like, I can't do what you do. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. You know, he wanted, although you thought they were like, yeah, like I uh, thought the whole time, like, this is it, right? It was just, yeah, yeah it well, was, it was yeah. a bad deal. <laughs> I, when you say enrollment conversations, that one well, of the first thing that comes to mind was when I was building old school and I went uh, in my little town and there's this one person that I was convinced, you know, my opportunity was the right thing for her. And I hounded her and hounded her at the gym and everywhere. And then one day I thought, let me go and find her at work. So I went into work and she worked. <laughs> Seriously, this is what I did. She worked Stalker. in this shop. I, I was the stalker. I went into her shop. I bought her a coffee. I went in and she was actually upstairs working. And I said, oh, you know, is I won't say her name, but is she here? And um, they said, no, she's upstairs. I'm sure you can go upstairs. So I went upstairs and there she was busy working. And I start literally vomiting on her <laughs> all about the incredible opportunity and the amazing products and everything and after god I must have gone on for at least half an hour maybe even longer you know having given her the coffee and she says friend you know it's you know it sounds really good I'm really busy right now um you know can I let you know 
this is the same girl who a week later I saw in town and she ran away from me. <laughs> <laughs> she saw me and we made eye contact and she did a mutter and ran away from me. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, when I went on to building online and the first couple of enrollment conversations I did, you know, I had somebody supporting me and it was mm-hmm. amazing. Um, and then I thought I really should be able to do this on my own by now. So I went on to trying to do this on my own, except I was so nervous. I did the same thing and literally just talked nonstop for a half an hour about the incredible products and amazing, you know, <laughs> compensation plan and everything. And uh, yeah, thanks. That's really interesting. But let me think about it, you know. Yeah. Never heard from them again. Unfriended mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Well, for me, if I have to jog the memory, <laughs> uh, I mean, because we probably all have... Oh. Lots of these kind of conversations mm-hmm. when we didn't have the skill sets, we didn't know what we were doing other than we just wanted to build our business, right? Mm-hmm. So one that I can recall, and this is this one was pretty painful if I'm if I'm looking back now, but um, I had followed the system, right? Like went into Messenger and just messaged all the people. Like you're going through your friends list and you know sending your however many a day, and this one guy from high school. Uh, actually, we went to middle school together. Might have been my boyfriend in seventh grade <laughs> for like a minute. Um, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, um, I had sent him a couple videos and he got excited about what he saw. Well, oh, that sounds good. That was <laughs> but, so, well, <laughs> What were you sending him, Adrian? <laughs> he was curious to know more <laughs> about the business. About the opportunity. Um this but, is not an only so, fan story. Yeah. <laughs> so I got my uh, my sponsor on, my upline on, who also we all went to school together. We all was church together. Like, and I was like, okay, I'm doing a three way call, opportunity presentation. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, we seriously were on for over an hour, con- like convincing him, convincing him, like all this stuff and he ended up enrolling, but like, I didn't even feel excited about it at the end of that conversation because I, it was just like, I don't wanna have to convince people to join this. Mm -hmm. And to show you that that doesn't work is a year later, he still had never done a fast start. He'd never launched his business. He hadn't done anything, right? And I think it was, he just said yes and enrolled. So we would go away. A pity, you know? a pity enroll. You got a pity date. I know. <laughs> you know, so. and for mine, so when Brandy and I first started building online, we weren't actually using influence marketing. What we were doing is we were going into Facebook yard sale groups. Oh. Do you remember those? I mean, some yeah. of them are still around. We were joining them all over the United States, and we were going in and we were dropping like, like, a job, job opportunity, job opportunity. Job opportunity post. Work from home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I remember I dropped it. There was this guy who's like, yes, I'm interested. I'm like, great. Let's hop on a, let's hop on a zoom call. He's like in another state, never met him. He actually hopped on and that, that, I mean, I didn't get stood up and that was usually <laughs> what happened, right? They wouldn't show up. This guy shows up. I put the, I, you know, show him the video and halfway through the video, all of a sudden he was just gone. He just hopped off the call. And I was like, what do I do? Do I keep showing the video? Like, and he's gone. And I was like, I waited like about 10 minutes and then I messaged him and I was like, oh, did like your internet go out? He's like, no, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was like, okay, he's not going to enroll. <laughs> right. So like, there's so many stories that we all have about what not to do. Right. Or like the worst stories. But now let's like share, how do we actually have an effective enrollment yeah, conversation? Yeah. Mm. Probably, I noticed in every one of our stories, there was a theme that they're not the right people, Mm -hmm. right? And that's what in traditional network marketing, they teach you the first thing, everyone is your prospect, go and approach every single person. Don't prejudge them because you never know. And if it's a no, it's not right now or whatever. So, and we are trained from the beginning, approach every single person because we want to be coachable, right? Mm -hmm. It worked for someone and we desperately want to make it work for us. But we quickly realize that we're wasting our time. We're getting rejected. We don't want to be a spammy Grammy. And it's just, 
not how we want to build a business. That's how I felt, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So the first advice I would give someone is to pre-qualify your prospects because the effectiveness of enrollment conversation are based on the quality of your prospects. And some people will say, well, how do I know, right? Are they pre-qualified if I'm just, you know, if I met them in the grocery store? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, this is if you meet people in a grocery store and start talking to them out of the blue, that's not pre-qualifying. That's just approaching every single person. So what I learned in influence marketing, the concept that I was not aware, it's market awareness. Yeah. Like if yeah. you know, I want to share a little bit what market awareness is because it might blow your mind. So there are people who are not even aware they have a problem, right? You're solving someone's problem, whatever it is. They're not even aware they have a problem. For example, if you see a person that they're a little bit overweight and you go just and start pitching them, oh, would you like to lose a few pounds? They will get mad at you. Yeah. Right? Well, maybe, <laughs> this be person, offended. maybe this person is pregnant. Maybe this person <laughs> is overweight because of a heart condition, right? You don't know their story. You can't Maybe just... they don't care. Yeah, right? maybe like they they're don't care. Happy maybe they're their own skin. completely yeah. happy being the way they are. Not yeah. everyone wants to lose weight like mm -hmm. so people not aware that they have a problem that's like the first layer of your market uh then there are people who are aware of the problem but they're not looking for solutions mm -hmm. right like those who know okay yeah, I'm, I'm overweight so what i'm happy so then there is people who are aware of the problem looking for the solution and they're happy with the solution they already God, maybe they bought something at Walmart and it works, right? And yeah. it's five bucks and you're trying to sell them something for 500. Yeah. <laughs> so, but there are people out there who have the problem, who are looking for solutions, who've tried everything and it didn't work and they still looking for something what you exactly have. Mm -hmm. And it becomes so much easier to talk to those kinds of people, right? And that's how you're going to get nine yeses out of 10 instead of one out of a hundred. Yeah, if you're yeah. talking to the right people, so, it definitely yeah. makes a huge pre difference. Pre-qualifying your mm -hmm. prospects yeah. is essential. Yeah, yeah. Yes. and I think another part of what makes the enrollment conversation or closing conversation simple and normal and authentic is the whole process of influence marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, building that audience of people who are maybe solution aware and it's building a relationship with them. So then when you you know, share things and you create curiosity around what's what's in it for them and they're raising their hand, they're coming onto that call willingly, right? And basically they already want what you have and it's like, just tell me where to buy or yeah. or how to join or, you know, what whatever. It's like what we're taught is to go door knocking and go solicit on people who didn't even ask for your service versus how do I get customers to come through my front door on their own? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. not going business to your door builders. And say, how do I get what yeah. you have? Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> Give it. To right. Me. But the process itself of influence marketing is what's going to make the closing conversation. You're going to roll more people. You're going to close more people and you're going to feel a heck of a lot better doing it that way than trying to convince people, having people just leave Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you go? Did you lose Have internet? people run from you? <laughs> run from you in the street. Yeah. In the yeah. street. <laughs> I think the other part of relationship building that a lot of network marketers don't understand is it takes time, right? Like it's not just, hi, Kat, my name is Brandy, you know, and that's all the rapport that mm -hmm. you ever build. Like well, you don't just meet somebody and then jump on them and say, hey, will you marry me? Mm -hmm. Right? That's not how this works. That's how people well, get in jail of, for that stalking. That was one of my biggest pitfalls. <laughs> When I was first starting in even in trying to grow online and even in first starting influence marketing, I thought that you built the relationship after they enrolled. Yeah. I was like, why am I going to spend all this time building relationships with all these people if they're not even going to join my business? I had to completely flip that mindset yeah. to you just go and you build the relationship and you yes. become friends with everybody. Yes. And it's because of that friendship, because of the relationship that they do enroll. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. point one thing. Some of the network marketers right now know that they have to build relationships and they get really good at it, but they only build a relationship with you when they're interested they in you mm -hmm. enrolling. Like they have an yeah. agenda and you can feel that yeah. right away. So you have to be very careful yeah. how you build an authentic relationship mm -hmm. where, you know, you don't care whether people join you or not, or you have that agenda because people because you want to get to, to know that. them you want to yes. get to know yeah them. and it does have to come off with authenticity yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's the first thing when somebody sends me a message and it's like hey i 
you know, love your profile or, you know, whatever, or, you know, mm-hmm. and they, and I don't really know them. I'm like, what do you want from me now? I know. But well, you can, was, you can see it coming. Like, <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You know, the, the alarm bells go off and your, your heckles go up immediately because you think, okay, <laughs> you're just waiting, you're just waiting for the yeah. pitch. Yeah. Well, it was my birthday a few weeks yeah. ago. Oh, and don't get me lately. wrong, birthday messages can be very effective as long as you're building relationship in between mm-hmm. someone's birthday. So there were some people that were sending me these birthday messages and I'm like, I haven't talked to you since my last birthday. Oh, yeah. You wish me a happy <laughs> birthday giving me some discount for whatever it is yeah. that you're selling. Yeah. You know, so but yeah. next I think, you know, like not only just building the relationship with the right person but yeah. it's building rapport yeah i think so that when you so next. i think is key um and this i learned the hard way because you know every conversation i had was all about me mm-hmm. you know what i wanted yeah and when you get on the call it's finding out about them is listening to them is you know we've got two years two i'm pointing in my eyes <laughs> we've, got two years. we've got two years <laughs> you got two ears and one mouth yeah you know so find out about them this may be the very first time when you actually they get on an enrollment call and they actually think gee she's actually really interested in me she wants to find out about Mm me and what I'm struggling with and like how it's how it's affecting me and you know you when and we often say this you know use the feel felt found you know when you're building that rapport and actually let them know that you've actually been in that place too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I totally get it. I, 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 I remember when I was there, um, I, f- it felt, I felt sick when I was doing this or it felt absolutely awful or I felt like I was a nobody or whatever. But mm-hmm. use the feel, you feel where they were, you f- how, you, how you can relate how they felt and, oops, sorry, and I felt that too. And, but here's what I found. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to brag on Fran yeah. for a minute. She nailed this, whatever she's talking about right now, so well. So we actually have a course that we teach our students about enrollment conversation. And me and Fran are (laughs) role playing Mm -hmm. together. She's the closer and I'm the potential customer. And we walk our students through this process. And actually, when she was guiding me, although I knew it. Wait, is this when you didn't buy? (laughs) And then you still oh, didn't she buy. She was testing me. Oh, she one point. She and then you hard. still didn't buy. No, and we were like, well, just buy. <laughs> just buy. <laughs> the way friend led that conversation, I got really real and emotional. Like, and I wanted to enroll so bad, but I said no on purpose. I wanted to <laughs> give her, Well, I wanted to give her uh, examples to students. Well, not everyone's going to say yes, even though, you know, even everything went right in this conversation and I just wanted to give her a hard time. <laughs> but you kept like, saying no. no. Like it sounds good, but you know, I love my company where I'm at right now because you will have people like yeah. that. I just wanted to give students more a real you know, scenario. But, but more I, scenarios, yeah. scenarios, more tips. And Fran was so amazing, you know, guiding me. And even when I said no, she still wanted to help me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like and, and that, that was such a different process that it literally made me cry, although I knew like it's a role play. Yeah. yeah. And it, when you when you are building this rapport and when you are asking the questions, is make notes, and repeat what they've said mm-hmm. back to them because I think oh she's actually really listening to me, mm-hmm. she gets me and she's listened and she's heard me. Well, and I think a big problem that most network marketers have when they're in this mm. is they want to like rush through it. Mm. And there's a key. It's like five words. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. Yeah. We tell we use yeah. that all the time rather than rushing through it. If yeah. someone is talking about them, you yeah. want them to dig deeper yeah. in whatever it is that they're yeah. talking about. And so just saying, well, tell me more about that. Mm-hmm. They'll dig deep and they'll dig deep and they'll dig deep. And that's when we get into what is that core emotion, pain and fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the next part of the enrollment conversation. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to uncover, you know, what are their pains? What is it that, you know, if it's a product, you know, type enrollment or opportunity, like, and by asking those questions and pulling back those layers is really when you'll get down to the pain, the the pains, the fears for you to be able to then, you know, relate to them, Mm -hmm. you know, and then point them in that direction that shows them the solution, 
right? But they have to uncover those pains and those fears on their own, or you're like guiding them into that space for them to bring it up because then it's like, oh my gosh, right? So then when you position the solution, the opportunity or whatever that looks like, it's like, again, they are closing themselves, right? But you can't just skip over mm -hmm. the pains, the fears, because that's really what's driving people's decision on, on, on whether or not they're gonna jump in, whether or not they're gonna do this, whether or not they're gonna buy from you or, or whatnot, is, you know, have you tapped into that enough? Mm -hmm. And if not, that's a gap in a lot of people's uh, process in mm -hmm. the- yeah, I think uh, they struggle in that fear piece because it's like you don't necessarily want to like dig into their fears, their, mm -hmm. their pains, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of uncomfortable for both of you. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of try to like avoid it. So and, yeah. And one thing too, which this is like a little hack is it's not just the pain because people even like, even if they've said it before, they'll be like, yes, I'm in pain. What I like to do is I like to bring up like, well, what if nothing changes? Yes. Yeah. Because people, they won't move necessarily on pain mm -hmm. alone or fear alone, but the fear of staying in that pain forever, mm -hmm. that's when like you've nailed that and they're like, oh my gosh, what if nothing changes? That's when it's like, okay, we've gotten you to the lowest of lows. Now let's bring you to the highest of highs. Right, yeah. which mm -hmm. there's a question that you can ask that we you know, have totally used in our business for mm -hmm. years now. And that's if you can wave a realistic magic wand, where do you want to be in six to 12 months from now? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people they're you know, they have these big audacious goals and dreams and whatever, which is great, but they're not specific enough, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. they don't like, they don't really know. It's like they haven't nailed it down. And so you've got to build that dream and desire with them. So you, one of those mm -hmm. questions is that, and then, you know, how's that going to feel when you've accomplished that? Like you want to dig back into mm -hmm. those emotions mm -hmm. and really nail that in. We so, don't rush through it. Yeah, we don't right? rush through it. It's a conversation with like a friend and that's yeah. the part that people miss, right? Because how many of you out there, you know, have asked a friend, how are you doing? And what does your friend usually say? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm yeah. fine. We're good. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Like it's, I'm fine. We're good. You know, you, and it's just like, oh, you it's know, surface level. You? It's so yeah. surface level. Mm -hmm. And people are looking for that connection. Yeah. And once you've created that connection, when you've asked the questions, they're like, wow, Fran really took the time to understand who I am, what I'm looking for, what kind of, you know, mm -hmm. pains, desires, those kind of things. And then like, even if they don't enroll, because some of them are still not going to enroll at that point, mm -hmm. maybe your solution isn't even a fit for them, which if you say that to them, you know what? I don't know if this is actually a fit, like... You know, based on what you've told me, like, I don't know if this makes yeah. sense for you. Mm -hmm. When you do stuff like that, like, they're like, people will appreciate it. Whoa, yeah. like, that's yeah. totally yeah. different than, hey, yeah. can you enroll because I need a diamond in the rough, right? Yeah. Like, you know? I need some commission. <laughs> if they, yeah. if they don't enroll is, is saying, you know, I've so loved this conversation. Yeah, and you care I've, about people. You know, I really, you know, and I'd love to stay connected with you. Um, and if I can help you in any way going forward, just let me know. I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to, to support you. Honestly, you've built a friend for life and you never know down the line, you know, it'll be three months. They will never forget you. Mm -hmm. They will never forget this conversation ever. Well, be we've had yeah. people that yeah. they weren't a fit for the product, yeah. but mm -hmm. because of how we handled the conversation, they came back and enrolled yeah. in the business because yeah. they knew someone who needed that product. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because you treated them as a human being rather than just a commission that they ended up enrolling, whether it was the next day or a year down the road. Or, yeah, or even like Kat, two years down the road, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And I didn't, just because Kat wasn't enrolling in my business when we first started, mm -hmm. I already loved her. I didn't care if she was in another company. I just wanted mm -hmm. to be friends with her. Like I really wanted to build that I relationship. Think this is one of the main components. Just drop the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And yeah. just be- Serve people. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, we use this analogy a lot where it's like popcorn popping, mm -hmm. right? We're so like wanting that one to pop that we forget that we're like, you think about popcorn, like the heat is going on hundreds, if not thousands while you're building the relationship. But it really is like human to human, one to one. And you're helping that person regardless if they pop, because you think, look at a bag of popcorn, there's still kernels that never popped, right? So you just keep the heating. You just, you just keep, keep providing. The, you keep the, loving. Yeah. You yeah. keep being that servant leader. And eventually, and that's the hard part, 
is it's eventually, and we don't know how long that eventually yeah, is. Yeah, you, you can't predict that timing you for can't. people. Because, because it'll be when yeah. it's the right time for them, mm-hmm. and it can never yep. be when it's the right time for us. But if you mm-hmm. keep pop putting in the kernels, yeah, okay, yep. then all they're going to just start popping at different times. Mm-hmm. So the people that aren't ready, guess what? You're going to have other people that are, Yeah. Mm-hmm. right, until they are. And then it's just like this yep. compound effect. And I think one of the things, too, about this whole thing is that it takes practice. Yes. You're not going to, like, nail this. Like, I mean, I could, I, you could wake me up in the middle of the night and you could tell, all right, Brandy, what do you do about dreams and desires? All right. If you could wave a realistic magic wand, where do you want to be six mm-hmm. to 12 months from now, right? <laughs> the reason I know that is because I've done this over mm-hmm. and over. I bet I, can, I can't even, I've lost count. It's probably yeah. over thousands of times. Yeah, that I've had this conversation with mm-hmm. people, but and how it's many just a, you messed up. In yeah, the I mean a billion, uh, right? Not. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I've had a million conversations, I but I messed up on a billion. <laughs> <laughs> and I have this massive team. I probably messed up on all of them. Actually, you messed up on the math. Well, that's the thing. When you're when you're, it's human to human, and you're just being a human. There's no such thing as messing up yeah. at that right. point. Or they don't like, know it, and, and they don't. And so they don't know. People yeah. want a script. Mm-hmm. And scripts don't work. No, no. this is a no. process. You go through a process of mm-hmm. finding out about them, of uncovering their pains and struggles, about painting that picture of their dreams and desires, and then seeing whether what you have is a fit. Yes. Uh, and that's the you last know? key of the whole thing is you actually have to ask for what you want. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people will go through this process and then they get to the end of it and they're like, okay. And they never mm-hmm. say, hey, do you actually, you know, mm-hmm. I'd really love to work with you. Does yeah. this look like a Adrian. fit to you? No. <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> yeah. We so. want to work with you, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> in case people so they didn't said know. I know we we were in a situation where we couldn't ask her <laughs> and we're like we really want you to enroll and she thought that we, we didn't, didn't love her lo- love her oh. or want her <laughs> that was a stupid rule no, I know stupid rule <laughs> mastering the art of effective enrollment conversations takes time practice and patience and the best way to learn is by doing so we want to challenge you to role play an enrollment conversation this week with a friend so you can start implementing what you learned today let us know how it goes in the comments below if you're ready to discover the secrets to social selling and attract high quality prospects check out our social recruiting secrets course linked in the description below don't forget to join our free online community with over 10 thousand network marketers just like you to discover the secrets to grow your business to six and seven figures using social media and automation. Find the link in the description below. (laughs) (laughs) Scroll when when we're all have talked till the end. It's at the end.